Today we're going to be talking about motion along a line. And motion along a line has to do with the velocity of a function and the acceleration of a function. And that function is the position function. So we're going to be given um, a position function in terms of t. And we're going to be asked to describe the motion along that line. So here's how a typical question about motion will go. A particle is moving along a line, along the x-axis, let's say. <clears throat> and the position function We'll call that x of t because it's going to be moving along the x-axis. So it's going to have an x value at any time t. Let's say x of t is equal to 2t cubed minus 14t squared plus 22t minus 5. And all the t values are going to be positive or 0. And what we're going to do is find the velocity and acceleration and describe the motion of the particle. So we're going to find v of t, which is velocity, a of t, which is acceleration, and we're going to describe the motion along the x-axis. So the velocity and the acceleration will be pretty easy because taking the derivative of that polynomial is pretty easy. We'll just do v of t is equal to 6t squared minus 28t <clears throat> plus 22. And if we wanted to factor this out, we would have a common factor of 2. And we'll be left with 3t squared minus 14t plus 11. And then this is factorable. There are factors of 33 that add up to negative 14. So what this is really equal to is 2 times t minus 1 times 3t minus 11, if you do the factoring. Now the acceleration is the derivative of the velo velocity. So the acceleration is just 12t minus 28. And there's a common factor of 4 here. So I'm just going to factor out the 4 and get 3t minus 7. So there's two uh, fully factored functions. <clears throat> now when, when x is increasing, the particle is moving to the right, which makes sense if you have a positive you know, if you have positive x values, they're going to the right, and then the more negative you get, you go to the left. So when x of t is increasing, the particle moves to the right. And vice versa. Now the, the first derivative of the velocity is equal to 0 when t equals 1 and 11 thirds. And what happens at 1 and 11 thirds is that the particle moves to the right and then it stops at t equals 1 and it, then it starts moving to the left and then it stops at t equals 11 over 3 and starts moving to the right again. So let's have a sign table here. of the velocity function, Whoops. the sign table of the velocity function. So the critical values that we could find in, with the velocity function, like we said, was t equals, t equals 1 and t equals 11 thirds, which is almost 4, 3 and 2 thirds, I guess. And the sign table goes plus, minus, plus, if you plug in some critical values into the velocity function here you can find out that it goes plus minus plus. So this function is increasing to the left of 1, then it decreases, and then it increases. So this particle moves to the right between x equals 0 and x equals 1. Remember the time starts at time equals 0. So re we really could have a 0 on here, which is a starting point. So if the function moves along the x-axis, it goes it goes to the right until the time is one, one second, or whatever the unit of, of time is. And then it moves to the left. 
and it moves to the left um, on the x-axis until it gets to time equals 11 thirds, and then it moves to the right. So that just shows the, the movement, the particle motion. Now the acceleration, um, we have a sign table for A of t, and that'll describe the acceleration. So we'll have a sign table for A of t, the acceleration. And for the acceleration, there's only one critical value, and that's 7 over 3. If you set A of t equal to 0 and solve it for t, so t is equal to 7 thirds, which is two and a thirds. So if we plug in a number less than seven thirds into the acceleration function, you can see that we would get a negative value in the second derivative. And then if we plug in a bigger number, we would get a positive value. So that means that this curve is concave down. I'll put CD for concave down and concave up over here. And what does that mean in terms of acceleration? If the second derivative is negative, then it means that the particle is decelerating or it's getting going slower and slower and slower and slower. So it decelerates until it gets to time equals 7 thirds and then it starts accelerating when you get to time equals um, 7 thirds and then it starts, starts up again. <clears throat> So that's just really nothing new. I just wanted to go over a, a particle motion with problem with you because this is very typical in calculus to study motion of something. Now, if it's moving from right to left, then a positive, a positive velocity means it's going to the right. But if this function is moving up and down, sometimes they talk about a particle, not a particle, but an object being tossed in the air or being thrown from some high place. So if this object is moving up or down, if you have a positive velocity, then the object is going up. If you have a negative velocity, it means the object is going down. But this, in this particular case, we're talking about right and left because we're moving along the x-axis. So don't let these little parentheses things um, confuse you. I'm just talking about in here if the particle moves vertically instead of horizontally you've got this kind of a situation so what I'd like you to do now with that hopefully this is a pretty easy concept for you what I'd like you to do now is I have a few problems out of a textbook this is not your textbook but I have some good problems for you to try um, that have to do with particle motion. So, can you zoom out just a little bit? Let me focus this a little bit better. There you go. Now what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to do exercises 25 through 28, which says, which is exactly what we just did. A particle is moving along the x-axis, and I'd like you to find the velocity and the acceleration, which should take you about two seconds to do for all of these problems, and then describe the motion of the particle and describe um, the velocity and the acceleration also. So those are four, hopefully, kind of quick questions for you to do. And then on numbers 29 and 30, what they've given you is a graph of the position function. So it, the position function means how far away from the origin it is at any particular time, t. So t, t goes from 0 to 15 seconds here, and it looks like it might go a little less than 0 to a little bit more than 15 here. But what I'd like you to do is um, answer these questions. At what time is the particle's velocity equal to zero in each situation? And at approximately what time is the acceleration equal to zero in each situation? And we can describe the movement along the x-axis after we get, get those two things written down. So hopefully uh, this will be a kind of a light weekend for you for ho homework-wise. And 
Hope you have a good weekend and I'll see you on Monday morning.